Once upon a time, there lived three little pigs. Their names were Elmer, Jake, and Curly. They were happy little pigs, except for one thing. There was a new neighbor in the forest who frightened them. His name was the Big Bad Wolf. <laughs> Each of the three pigs worried about the Big Bad Wolf's intentions, and whenever there was a dispute of some type, they felt the wolf didn't listen to their concerns. To be fair, he didn't feel the three pigs understood his problems, although they really didn't know what they were. Seeing no way to resolve the situation on their own, the three little pigs requested mediation from their forest elders, and being just as frustrated, the big bad wolf agreed to this. So it was decided that the wise old owl would serve as mediator. As mediator, I'm here to help you resolve your differences. But arriving at the resolution is up to all of you. I'm not here to decide who, who, who. Sorry, I can't help it. I'm not here to decide who's right or who's wrong. My role is to create a safe environment so you can talk about the situation. Okay, now that we're ready, I suggest the three little pigs talk first since they requested the mediation. Jigs, would you mind starting? Well, we've had problems ever since Big Bad Wolf moved next door. He struts around huffing and puffing all the time. It's really scary. And what's worse, when the sun goes down, he stops howling. Sometimes that goes on all night. And another thing, Big Bad Wolf has been sneaking into our garden and taking vegetables without asking. Hey, they don't have any proof it was me. Everybody knows I don't eat vegetables. I eat meat. Arr. Laraville's hothead, isn't that frightening? And that crack about not going into our garden, are you calling us liars? Elma, please, hold your comments until Big Bad Wolf is through. During mediation, each side needs to have a chance to speak without being interrupted. You'll have as much time as you need to respond. And so the mediation session continued. As each side talked, Wise Old Owl listened. And after a while, he decided it would help if each side met with him separately in what's called a caucus. Aha! Anything you say in this caucus is confidential, Mr. Wolf, unless you want to share it with the pigs. I'm hoping we can get at what's really bothering you, so we can address this problem. Are you sure that what I tell you won't get back to anyone? I have a reputation to protect. You have my word. The other animals in the forest expect me to prowl around at night and howl at the moon. This isn't easy to talk about, but my self-esteem isn't the greatest. So, I try to scare everybody. Now, I admit I blew down their houses, but it was an accident. I had a coughing fit. It was windy that day and some dirt was blowing around their houses. Some of it got into my lungs and made me huff and puff. The first house came down. I tried to turn my head away and cough, but there was the other house, and it went down. From what I could see, those homes were poorly built. Okay, but tell me, why are the three pigs accusing you of raiding their garden? This isn't easy for me to admit, but I really don't like meat. In fact, I'm a vegetarian. But I can't let anybody know that. My reputation would be ruined. So at night, I've been sneaking over to the pig's garden and taking vegetables. After talking more about his dilemma, Big Bad Wolf said he'd be willing to buy the pig's vegetables. Wise Old Owl asked if he could mention this to the pigs as a possible solution. The wolf agreed, but only if they don't know why he's doing it. With that, the owl met with the three little pigs in a confidential caucus. We are sure he's responsible for blowing down Elmer's straw house and then Curly's house of six. Luckily, neither one was home at the time, but neighbors saw the wolf strutting away after it happened. They also said that he'd been puffing and puffing quite a bit that day. And don't forget about our garden. It's a mess. We used to eat what we grew and then sold extra vegetables at the farmer's market. I want to thank everyone for meeting with me one-on-one. -on -one. Well, in the pig's case, I guess it was three-on-one. Both parties agreed to allow me to share certain things that were discussed so we can develop some possible solutions. Three little pigs, you've expressed concern about your personal well-being. And you've indicated you need to tend to your garden in a safe environment. 
You've also voiced your displeasure about the two houses being blown down. Mr. Wolf, you've indicated that it is in your nature to not only huff and puff, but to howl at the moon. Is that right? Both the three little pigs and Big Bad Wolf acknowledged that wise old owl understood their viewpoints. So he suggested they discuss ways of resolving their problems. Curly, we haven't heard from you yet. Do you have any ideas? It's important for solutions to come from those involved in the dispute, Curly. In that way, both parties are more likely to abide by what's agreed to. However, Curly simply refused to speak. But the owl continued encouraging the others to discuss a solution they could all live with. And finally, a resolution was reached. Okay, so, Big Bad Wolf, you agree to purchase vegetables from the pigs, and they, in turn, will sell them to you at fair market price. You also agree to help rebuild the damaged houses, but only if the pigs use stronger building materials. And the three little pigs, you agree to reinforce each home with concrete using straw and sticks merely as decorative elements. Fine! Since all parties are in agreement, please sign here. Curly, you've agreed to the resolution, but why wouldn't you say anything during the session? Um, excuse me. I can't explain why Curly won't say anything. This isn't easy to talk about, but Curly saw something recently that was very traumatic, and he's never been the same. One day, he went to a house down the street to borrow a cup of sugar. He didn't know the neighbor, but since it was a gingerbread house, he figured that they would have plenty of sugar. He knocked on the door, but no one answered. He knocked again, but still no answer. Then, all of a sudden, from inside the house, Curly heard a woman scream for help. So he opened the door and saw two little kids shoving an old woman into the kitchen oven. To say the least, it was very upsetting for Curly. He's scheduled to testify at their trial next week. Hmm... I read about that in the newspaper, the Hansel and Gretel case. They claimed they acted in self-defense. The old woman was actually a wicked witch. If only both parties had chosen mediation, they may have been able to reach a resolution to their dispute, and everyone could have lived happily ever after.